so what is an internal audit so earlier we saw a broad definition of what is auditing now we'll actually move a little bit deeper and find out what is an internal audit so internal auditing is an independent objective assurance and consulting activity designed to add value and improve an organization's operations so what happens here is that a company and their own person called as an internal auditor okay this internal auditor for example you can see here professionals called internal auditors are employed by organizations to perform the internal auditing activity so this auditing activity auditing is nothing but a checking activity right so this auditing activity okay uh, for do it, for doing it we appoint a person called as an internal auditor this is this internal auditor is appointed by the company so this internal auditor is an employee of the company the internal auditor's role in a company is to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management internal control and governance processes so this auditor what he does is he ensures that the whether this company has a proper internal control system how this internal control system is operating whether employees are following the control system is there any drawback of it he tries to find out that he also tries to find out the risk management whether risk management is adequate for the company that he tries to find out he checks on the internal control and he also checks on the governance processes so these are the roles of a internal auditor so an internal auditor predominantly checks how the company's internal control system is efficiently operating so that's about the internal auditor's work so what are the various roles that he plays we have already seen it earlier we'll see it in detail here efficiency and effectiveness of operation so that's about how to how well the internal controls are functioning that he tries to find out the reliability of financial management financial and management reporting so he tries to find out whether the financial statement numbers are true and fair so he 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 also has a role for that he tries to find out whether the company is having all the records which the government asks whether the law asks or the regulations are there so whether the, the government whether the company has sufficient records uh in terms of uh, complying with the laws and regulations of the government conducting proactive fraud audits so that is also they do they try to find out areas where there is a high chance of frauds occurring and they try to uh, find out the loopholes there and they try to fix those loopholes participating in fraud investigations if a fraud occurs they also go there and try to find out how that fraud has occurred conducting post investigation fraud audits to identify control breakdowns and establish financial loss so they try to find out where this control systems have been lacking so this is the overall scope of an internal auditing so now we look at what is an auditor's independence so here we look at the auditor's independence while internal auditors are employees are not independent of the company so they are uh, employee of the company they are not a third party to the company internal auditors can be from internal audit department or manager from a other department so a large company can have its own internal audit department but a medium scaled company they don't need to have a separate department rather they can bring any other manager from other department to to also work as an internal auditor for example the finance manager can also work as an internal auditor but if you are going to appoint another department manager as an internal auditor then such internal auditors should not audit their own department so the finance uh, manager should not audit his own department that is not allowed independence and objectivity so independence refers to whether this internal auditor okay has to listen to the ceo okay because predominantly what we are trying to do with internal auditor is we are trying to check whether all the control system is proper and we are also trying to check whether the ceo is also doing a proper job in with regard to internal control so this person should not actually report to the ceo and ceo should not control the internal auditor so that is what we tell in terms of independence okay so once we have independence we also have objectivity objectivity is uh, if we are under the direct control of ceo if the internal auditor is under the direct control of the ceo then there is no objectivity when there is no direct control then he has objectivity because he can give an opinion on 
even about the CEO and also about the internal control system. So objectivity is there is no bias involved in his opinion. Okay. So we should have an independence and objectivity of an internal auditor is achieved through separate reporting lines of the internal audit department. So this internal auditor does not come under the CEO. Okay, he comes under the audit committee. Okay. So where does audit committee come? Audit committee is a part of the board of directors. So look at the chain. Board of directors, under them audit committee, under them internal auditor. So it is a separate line, okay? And it is it doesn't come under the CEO. So this, this is a separate kind of a setup. Internal auditors are required to report to the board of directors or the audit committee. Internal auditors do not report to the management, so they are not bound under the CEO. The required organizational independence from management enables unrestricted evaluation of management activities and the personal and allows internal auditors to perform their role effectively. This is what we discussed earlier. So when the internal auditor doesn't come under the CEO, he can give an unbiased objective report about the CEO's activities and the internal control system. So that's what we saw. This is a very crucial and a important element from an exam perspective. So if you guys really like the video, put a like for us and share it with your friends who might find it useful. So if you guys have any queries or questions, post it in the comment section. We'll be like happy to answer them. If you guys have any other ideas for further videos, uh, you can put it in the comment section. We'll be like uh, creating a new video on that topic also. So thank you guys. We'll meet in the next video. So now we'll move on to the contents of an internal control audit report. So how does an internal control audit report looks like? So usually the contents are table of contents, summary, background and methodology, findings, prioritize the action list with suggested fix, fixes and timeline, appendix of audit detail. So if you look at here, it tells uh, what is this audit all about, internal audit is about, uh, wh why are why the company is doing this and what kind of a systematic uh, um, examination is being followed, what they have found out in their uh, research and uh, how they are going to fix out the problems in the company. So what are the suggested uh, recommendations, the suggested actions the company has to take and the timeline for taking that action. So these are the contents of an internal audit report. So here you can get a broader idea which which department is being audited, the date, the audit period, the audit manager who has done it. Okay, uh, what is the what is the audit manager's uh, uh, comments on the operations, on the financial statement, and the laws and regulations, and an effective summary and an executive summary which tells the about the entire internal audit in a short snapshot in a short snapshot so if you guys really like the video put a like for us and share it with your friends who might find it useful so if you guys have any queries or questions post it in the comment section we'll be like happy to answer them if you guys have any other ideas for further videos uh, you can put it in the comment section we'll be like uh, creating a new video on that topic also so thank you guys, we'll meet in the next video.